sitting in the corner of a motel room in a little city in Mississippi as we have class. I really wanted to do the class outdoors. I found a place yesterday that would be ideal and, uh, and yet the content of these two verses, uh, what John is trying to teach us far outweighs any lovely setting and I thought I could concentrate better, might be able to share better what the Lord's got on my heart if I just sat down with you and we studied the Word of God. First John chapter 5 verses 14 and 15, those two verses. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he heareth us wow and if we know that he hear us and we just had a bible promise that he does if we know that he hear us Whatsoever we ask, can you imagine? Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. John the disciple, John the apostle of our Lord loves to emphasize the prayer promises of our Savior. And he has certainly done so here in this text. You might assume that uh, John has here taken up a new topic. He's going to talk about prayer. God hears our prayers, answers prayer, and all of that is true, but it is not exactly a new topic. He has been talking to us about loving one another. And I'm going to guarantee you right now, if I don't love my brother, if I get down on my knees to pray in my prayer closet and I've got bitterness, holding a grudge, hatred toward my brother, my prayers, my prayer specifically will not be answered. In fact, Psalm 66, 18 indicates it will not be heard. John has been talking to us about fellowship with the Father fellowship with the Son. And uh, uh, if, 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 prayer here is not a new topic, it is a continuation of my fellowship with God the Father through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. John has been talking to us about living right, about doing righteousness, he said that's one way we can know we're saved, that we, we will be among those that do righteousness, live godly lives. So prayer is not a new topic. It is the result. It is the result of living righteously, doing the things that are pleasing in the eyes of God. If I'm not doing what's pleasing in God's eyes, if I'm only satisfying myself, I'm not too sure this promise applies. Let's look at our two verses in, as we usually do, vocabulary, verse by verse form. And this is the confidence that we have in him, in Jesus. And this is the confidence that we, uh, let me put it this way, the word would be synonymous this is the assurance that we have in our Savior, through whose name we pray, to our Heavenly Father, God Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. This is the confidence that we have in Him. This is a pronoun, and it's only natural that we would ask uh, to, to what area of the sentence does this pronoun this apply? I believe John is looking forward, 
class, listen to me. I believe that John is looking forward to this great prayer promise. This is the confidence, the assurance that we have of him that if we ask anything, John does qualify it. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. I can have confidence in that statement. I can find assurance. I can find peace. I can find victory. I can find faith to keep on praying, carrying a specific need before the Lord. And this is the confidence that we have in him. Let me give you the Greek word for confidence there. Parousia. Parousia. We have had it before. I particularly right now uh, remember a Hebrews class where we discussed it uh, rather intently. Parousia means this. Par, the P-A-R, it's a prefix. It is literally the Greek word that means all. P-A-S, pas, means all. When you blend words, when you hook them together in Greek, sometimes a letter will change at the point of fusion. Par is pas, means all. Then parasia, that is the little Greek verb reo, R-H-E-O, and it means to speak or to say. It means to speak or to say, but in this sense, things that will flow out of your mouth. Well, I can do better than that. Things that will flow out of your heart. And this is the confidence that we have in him. If we'll ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. With that promise, I can slide down on my knees right now and come before God, literally, parousia, telling him everything. Saying it all. If I've had a bad week, I can tell him my problems. If I've had a discouraged week, I can tell him my fears. I can tell him my doubts. I can tell him my apprehensions. Telling it all. This is the confidence that we have in him. That, there were times I wanted to ask my daddy something growing up, and uh, I loved my daddy. He was a godly daddy, but I was afraid to ask him. I was afraid he would say no. I was afraid my uh, request would hurt his feelings. I, 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 I was afraid that he would get on to me for the very idea of entertaining, uh, wanting that thing. But oh, when I go to my heavenly daddy, I don't have to be, I can tell him everything. I can ask him anything. I can, according to his will. And, and uh, listen to James. If any man lack wisdom, I do. If any man lack wisdom, listen, let him ask of God who giveth to all men liberally, he will give you wisdom and upbraideth not. He will never rebuke you, upbraid. He will never get on to you. He will never sit you down and give you a lecture if you're asking for something so clearly in his will as wisdom. Let him ask of God who gives and upbraids not. It's the same idea here, James and John, but the same Holy Ghost who wrote uh, the, uh, the entire New Testament, the entire Bible. This is the confidence. Tell him everything. I can unload my heart. I can tell him the good things and then I can even tell him the bad things. He will understand. This is the confidence that we have in him. Preacher, surely you're not going to talk about a little two-letter uh, preposition. In him. I think I am. Normally, the Greek text there <clears throat> that the Holy Ghost gave to John would be spelled Epsilon Nu, E-N. N, and, and E-N is pronounced N. But the Holy Spirit does not use that preposition. He uses the preposition P-R-O-S, pros, 
Oh, I've got to class. I've got to tell you what that means. It is a preposition that essentially means face to face. Face to face. Did you know when you pray, somebody get a hallelujah ready? Somebody get a glory to God ready? Somebody get a I'm not worthy of this ready? We get to go face to face with the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the assurance. This is the permission to tell him everything in my heart and my mind. This is the assurance that we have in him. Pros, face to face with him. Does anybody believe this? I don't see how we could not believe it after having studied uh, our last year plus in the word of God. Jesus is living in me right now. Paul said to the Colossians, Christ is in you. And yet while Jesus is living in me, I am living in Jesus. What do you mean, preacher Bible? If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. The moment I got saved, the Holy Ghost took me and baptized me, immersed me, saturated me in Christ Jesus, into the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the confidence that we have face to face. I am in his presence. That, that, he's going to tell us a little more about this, this uh, confidence. In a few minutes, if I have time, I'm going to give you some other verses that use the word parousia, confidence. It will amaze you. This is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything, if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Oh boy, vocabulary here. It is absolutely, it's amazing. It's rich. It's thrilling. If we ask, if we ask, listen, let me give you the verb for ask. Iteo, let me spell it, A-I-T-E-O. It is a present tense verb. And this is what that means. John expects us to, in the present tense, be asking, 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 and asking as a habitual, consistent way of life. If we ask, if we ask, it is a first person plural verb and that means John is including himself if we ask. John is also a man of prayer. Let me give you an instance of Iteo when our King James translator, uh, translators rendered it in another way than ask. I found two times they did this, to beg. Strong word, to beg. If we beg, if we ask, if we crave, if we plead all the same idea, anything, anything, it is an indefinite pronoun. It is simply spelled T-I-S, T-I-S, if we ask anything. Now, so far, there are no limits there. How can God tell me I can ask anything and he will hear uh, my request? Tis, indefinite, anything, anything. It's, an acu it's in the accusative case, the subject, the object for which I'm asking, anything. But, please hear me, but that's to the man who loves his brother and sister in Christ, ask anything. That's to the man who has learned to be at home in the presence of Jesus and his Father who fellowship with Jesus and the Father. Anything. That's to the man or the woman who doeth righteousness, lives for God day in and day out. Anything. Anything. Uh, that's to the individual who loves the word of God and, and who abide. Anything. If we ask anything, now here comes the qualifier. According to his will. According there, let me spell the Greek word. K 
K-A-T-A, kata. Pretty sure I sure don't know what it means. It means down. You see, say my friend. The foundation, the basis, by this criteria, anything according to his will. I will base all my prayers, the foundation of all my asking, the very the very criteria by which everything I will plead from God must be the will of God. The will of God. It's almost saying this, Lord, if you don't want it for me, I don't want it. I want your desire. I want your will. Listen to this word. I want your best in my life. And Lord, don't give me anything that does not fit into that parameter. If we ask anything according to his will, let's talk about that now will. Thelema. T H E L E M A. Thelema. It, it comes from a verb, T H E L O. Thelo. And it means, as I've already explained it even before I got to the vocabulary word, anything God desires, anything God wishes for me. Anything that put a smile on God's face. Anything that would, it's an anthropomorphism, anything that would exalt God emotionally and thrill God on my behalf. Anything according to his will. I think John's pretty sure if I love my brothers and says I'll not be asking too far away from God's will. If I'm really doing righteousness day and night, I won't be asking God for something lewd or selfish or, or, or carnal. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Akuo, our word acoustics. Uh, that uh, How does sound uh, carry in this uh, uh, room? Does it bounce off the wall? Is it suitable for a, a Bible class? That's the idea. That's the idea. He heareth us. If you were to carry it to its ultimate, he does this. He listens to us. He hears us. Uh, it is a present tense, active voice for God engages and listens when we ask anything according to his will. He heareth us. Notice the us, it is plural. He heareth us. It is a genitive plural. Boy, and that needs to be explained. He considers us, genitive is the possessive case. He considers us his own. He claims us as his little children and he will hear us when we ask anything according to his will. Will I get an amen here? I don't want anything outside of his will. I don't want anything that uh, would not bring honor and glory to him. We must continue with verse 15. And if we know, the Greek scholars tell me that is a third class condition. Maybe we do, maybe we don't, we should. With the verse we just read and been talking about for uh, 17 minutes, we should. If we know, and that's I do, the verb, it's not denosco, it's E I D O I do. Preacher, I think you've told me before, I have. And, and, but what does it mean? It is uh, knowledge the Holy Ghost gives me. It is knowledge that has been implanted with me through the teaching ministry of Almighty God. It is not knowledge I necessarily gain by reading a commentary, though I'm not against reading commentaries. You well know that, class. It is knowledge the Holy Spirit is peacefully placed down in my bosom, in my soul, in my mind. I know that he hears me. And if we know that he hears us, and that is still a present tense verb, when I speak, he hears me. If I'm, again, I don't want to go through the litany again. If I'm loving my brother, if I'm doing righteousness, if I'm fellowshipping with the Father, if I'm applying myself to the Word, uh, 
we know that he hears us. That little, that little paragraph that Malachi nearly closes his book with it. End of chapter 3, I believe it is. When God's little children speak, he hears. It, it implies when we're even fellowshipping with each other, God tunes in. God lit and says, and God's writing a book. God's pleased when we're talking with each other about him and his majesty. All I'm saying is, and we know that, and if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask. That is one of those wide open Greek particles. Whatsoever we ask. But it is still contingent on the will of God. It is still contingent on me having confessed my sins. It is still contingent on me living a righteous life. I can't be a hypocrite all day and know that uh, whatsoever I ask, I will have that petition. And if we know he hears us, if you got that prayer through, if God heard, we know we know that's Ido again. But this time it's not Ido in the present tense, it's Ido in the perfect tense. Then we know. We know. It means I know it and I will not lose the assurance of it. I know it. I, I, I know it. Have you ever prayed a prayer and just instantly you knew God heard it? I prayed a few prayers like that and I knew the instant I prayed God heard it and the answer was on the way. That's sort of what John is getting at here. I know, implanted by the Holy Ghost. I prayed, the Holy Ghost interpreted, the Holy Ghost explained my prayer to Jesus, prayed through Jesus' name, through the shed blood, he expressed it to the Father, the Father heard it, and uh, get the answer is coming. We know that we have the petitions, echo, the verb have is E-C-H-O, echo. God's already put them in our hand. They may not be here yet, but they're as good as if we know that we have the petitions. Still, actually building off that iteo verb, except here it's itema, itema, the petitions. It means the things you asked for, the things you requested. We have the petitions that we desired. Here it's translated desired. Earlier it was translated ask. It's iteo, that we'll have the things that we desired of him. Oh, let me show you this, another preposition change. Of him, and it's para, P-A-R-A. -A. I have them right along beside him. I asked them in his presence. He heard. He has granted my prayer, and I'm enjoying the answer to that prayer right beside para, right alongside him, the Lord Jesus, my Savior. What an encouragement to pray. I hesitate to say this, but if you're living right and if you love Jesus with all of your heart, that prayer promised that I've just discussed the last 20 plus minutes, that is a blank check. Did you hear me? And I say it reverently. That is a blank check God has given you if you love him with all your, whatever you ask. If you'll keep it within the box called the will of God, I'll hear it and I'll grant it and I'll give it to you. Wow. Now, I want to do something, and I did not do it as we rushed quickly through the vocabulary. I want to do something. I am still, I am still in awe of the word confidence, parasia, and this is the confidence that we have in him. And see, that is set in the context of praying to our Savior. This is the confidence that we have in him. It's as if I would say, class, I'm telling you, pray, ask him, 
carry these things before you love the word of God. You're trying to live right. You're loving your brothers and sisters and you're trying to do righteousness. You're fellowshipping with the Father. There's no known sin that's unconfessed in your life. Uh, 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 I'll guarantee you, Jesus will answer your prayers. You hear my word? I guarantee you, your prayers will be answered. I promise you, your prayers will be answered. I testify, your prayers will be answered. Preacher, how can you do all that? That's confidence. This is the confidence that we have in him. I was looking at the way parousia is translated elsewhere in the New Testament. Let me give it to you in John 7, 13. Gospel of John 7, 13. No man spake openly of Jesus for fear of the Jews to speak openly parousia God wants us to come before the throne of grace and speak openly yes when Paul wrote those words let us come boldly before the throne of grace he uses parousia let us come boldly openly you don't have to be ashamed you don't have to be afraid Tell him everything. Here's the word parousia in our King James Bible. I, I, I just selected a short verse, uh, John eleven fourteen. 14. Jesus said, Lazarus is sleeping. And they thought, the disciples thought he meant he was getting eight hours of sleep in his little cot over there. And, 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 and then Jesus said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead, plainly. This is the confidence. I know it. I can go before him and I can speak openly. But not only that now, I can speak plainly. Plainly. Wow. Wow, wow. Again and again, it is translated with boldness, boldly, openly, plainly. Hey, hey, Hebrews chapter 10 Verse 35, again, parousia is translated confidence. Listen, cast not away your confidence. Don't throw it away. Oh my, God has given us this, whatever you ask, and you ask it according to my will, I'll hear you, and you've got the petitions. I'll grant the things you have desired of me. Oh, that ought to give me confidence. But now, John in 1 John, in 1 John, he uses confidence, parousia, three different times. I've got to give you these. 1 John 2, 28. Write it down, class. Little children, I want you to abide in him that when he shall appear, we may have confidence. Parousia. We may have confidence and not be ashamed at his coming. John said, I want you to live the kind of life. I want you to be the kind of believer. I want you to have fellowship with the Father and the Son and with each other and the Lord so much that when he comes, you'll not be afraid. You'll not be nervous. You'll not be weary. You will be, you will be looking at the greatest friend you ever had. You'll be looking at the one who died to save you from a devil's hell and that you can plainly boldly, openly approach him, bow down and love him and hug him and kiss those feet that were nailed to that old rugged cross. First John 4, 17, here's another instance. There are only three, here's the second. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. I believe when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ, it is possible to have lived the kind of life that we can be plain and open and unashamed, not afraid of him at his coming. And then uh, uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse number 17, herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. I'm sorry. And then 1 John 5, 14, this is the confidence that we have in him right where we are. Oh my. He wants me to have that kind of openness. How can I put it? I'm struggling here. 
like when I knock on the door and the friend says, come in, sit down, anywhere you want to, make yourself at home. Uh, there's uh, refreshments in the refrigerator if you'd like. Uh, the telephone's over here should you need to. God is saying, come before the, before the throne of grace. Come into my home. Come into my home and uh, make yourself at home. You don't have to worry about anything you talk about. I know your heart. I know how you love me. Uh, we've spent so many hours together. Come in. Let us come boldly. This is the confidence that we have in him. I've got to give you a few quotes. Someone said this. It's worth writing down. Prayer is God's appointed way to commune with his children. Here, here we go. He speaks to me through the word of God. Then I, saturated in the word of God, I get to speak to him. That's God's appointed means of communion. He speaks to me through the word and I speak to him on my knees in prayer. Somebody said this. You might want to write it down. Prayer is the thermometer of the spiritual life. You say, now preacher, I, I don't pray sometimes for a week at a time, but I have had my prayer. That's not a good sign. Prayer is essentially the thermometer of your Christian life. How often do you talk to him? How often do you spread before him the needs of your heart? Someone said this, what breathing is to a physical man, I've been breathing all the way through this meditation. What, I'm alive, what breathing is to the physical man, praying is to the spiritual man. Prayer is our very life breath as we talk to God. He has breathed in this book. As I read this book, I am inhaling his breath. And then I exit, I pray back to him, breathing. What it is to the physical man, so is praying to the spiritual man. Someone said this. <laughs> Someone great said this. His name is Jesus. If we do not pray, we will faint. If we do not, I, implying I get great strength from my prayer life. And then why not pray? If you'll ask anything, according to my will, I'll grant it. You know good and well, you have, you have, I've already given it, you have the petitions that you have to, if we do not pray, we will faint. And then I think it's pretty clearly emphasized in our little two verse text, but nonetheless, let me say it. The most important thing about prayer, clearly to John, the most important thing about prayer is the will of God. The will of God. I heard a great preacher, he's long since been in heaven, said, he said this one day. Class, I want to share it to you in the context of prayer. He said, Prayer is not twisting God's arm to get what I want out of him. Prayer is twisting my will, conforming my will, bringing in submission my will so that I will want what God wants for me. I'm going to say that again. Prayer's not try wrestling with God to make God do what you want. Prayer might be wrestling with yourself to make you want to do what God wants. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Mm. Someone told me this years ago, a godly preacher. I want to share it with you. He said, Mike, Mikey, God answers prayers always, but in one of three ways. This may help somebody. Sometimes God says yes. He sure has. Sometimes God says no. I've had a few of those. And sometimes God says wait a while. Oh, preacher, I'm praying for my lost cousin to get saved. I know it's God's will. He's not willing and he should perish. Uh, but preacher, uh, God's not saved him yet. 
Keep praying. Don't quit. Don't lighten up. Don't let your hope grow weak. God has not yet said yes, but God has not said no. Not willing. God is maybe saying, wait a while. Maybe he wants you to learn to be a better witness to the cousin. Maybe he wants you to learn how to better share the love of Jesus with the cousin. Maybe he wants the cousin to see you become more forgiving as a Christian and, and become more in love with the word of God. Sometimes he says yes. Sometimes he says no. Sometimes he says, wait a while. And I've got several prayers before him right now. And I'm presuming that the answer is, wait a while. I'll keep knocking. I'll keep seeking. I'll keep asking for his honor and his glory. Then someone said this. I'm going to quote myself out of time. But someone said this. God's very honor depends on him answering prayer. If we pray correctly in Jesus' name, no unconfessed sin that I'm aware of. Uh, 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 in, in my, I've got the sin issue straight. I love my brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm abiding in the word of God. If I pray right, God's very honor, God's very word is, is hinging. God's honor depends on his answering my prayer. And those are not my words. Those are God's words out of the verse that we have noticed, the verses we have noticed today. Someone said this, prayer is perhaps the most direct expression of our faith. Faith comes by the word of God. I'm in the word of God, obeying the word of God. Prayer is maybe the most direct expression of my faith. Lord, you said you would do it. I share your very words with you and I expectantly wait. He said, you will get, you will have the things you have desired of here. Someone said this, the centrality of the whole prayer issue is fellowship with God. I really think God wants us to pray just because God loves it when we hang around with him. God loves it when we commune with him. God loves it when we fellowship. God loves to be in our prayer. And oh my, can you imagine a worm like me, a sinner, ex-sinner like me, and God enjoys my company. Listen to Jeremiah 33, 3. God says, call unto me, I will answer thee. That's a prayer promise. And I'll show you some great and mighty things you never thought of. I'll show you some great and mighty things you don't even know. Ephesians 3.20 Paul says God is able to do, to give exceeding abundantly above everything we could ask or think. Pray, pray, pray. Listen to Psalm 81.10. God himself, I am the Lord thy God. I'm the one that brought you out of Egypt. Open wide your mouth. I'll fill it. I think that's a prayer promise. Ask big, great things. I will grant them. Open wide thy mouth. I'll fill it. Some of you say, preacher, I'm not as much into this lesson. James chapter four, verse two. You have not because you ask not. Get to praying. Praying in God's will. Maybe, I've got to close. Maybe the greatest blessing of this, this whole concept of prayer in the Christian life, maybe the greatest blessing of it all is the assurance, the positive assurance of knowing that he's listening, that he is hearing. This is the confidence we have in him if we ask anything according to his will. He heareth us. Wasn't it Jesus? Ask, it'll be given. Seek, you shall find. Knock, keep on knocking. It'll be opened unto you. Class, pray. Pray, God give us a spirit of prayer. May we pray and God answer according to your will. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. What a text of scripture. Praying in the will of God with the assurance he's listening.
and the absolute promise guarantee, he will answer those prayers.